sadness and confusion, we turn, we turn to the Lord, reliance on the long-lasting, long-suffering compassion and mercy of God. But even in these days of, of lament, I want to open with a couple positive praise notes. Avery, Avery, you're turning one year old tomorrow, and we all want to say happy birthday. For those of you who are my age or older, I, I can't help but think of Romper Room or J.P. Patches. I look out into TV land out there, into the world of the internet, and we say happy birthday, Avery. And on a more personal note for myself, tomorrow is also my 35th wedding anniversary, so Pam, happy anniversary. I love you more than words can say. As I mentioned last week, I'm beginning a new series, The Long and Winding Ancient Road Less Traveled, an invitation to look back to ancient roads or paths of wisdom, more importantly, to, to lean on and look to the Ancient One, who, in the words of the ancient liturgy, was and is and is to come, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Yahweh, ancient one, ageless one, and yet here with us today. I'd like to open 
with a prayer taken from the breastplate of St. Patrick, some of which are some familiar words that we have sung and some with some more contemporary tunes. Christ as a light, illumine and guide me. Christ as a shield, overshadow me. Underneath me, beside me, to my left and to my right, Lord, we need you. We need your presence. We need your words. And so we worship. We humbly kneel before you today. And we pray for your peace, for your mercy. May your kingdom come. May your will be done in us and through us today. Amen.
26, 16. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is, and walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. But you said, we will not walk in it. Shepherd, your sheep are weary, battered, bruised. Your sheep are lost and longing and coming up empty. And we need to hear your voice, whatever you might have to say to us. Shepherd, show us the way. Show us the way. And Jeremiah tells us to ask where the good way is. Stand at the crossroads and look. I'm supposed to be starting a new sermon series today from Jeremiah 6.16, one of my favorite verses of the Old Testament. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. But you said, we will not walk in it. I told you last week that uh, I wanted to begin a series looking at the ancient ways of monasticism, a, re a refresher in some of the old ways of discipleship and what these monks have to teach us about the school 
of the Lord's service. The learning to be apprentices of Jesus, being spiritually formed our entire life long. Of course, we'll look at things like solitude and silence, prayer rhythms and intercession. I'd like to invite us into taking some, having some fresh eyes on, on work and vocation. An intentional focus on humility and submission and obedience. Intentional habits of life in community, especially during these days when we haven't been able to gather in community. Even looking at the vows that monks take, a life of discipline. Several weeks ago, uh, we watched the Pixar movie Cars again. We, as many of you uh, have been doing, not all of you, but many of you have been going through on uh, Netflix or Amazon or Pixar Plus or pulling out DVDs and watching old movies these days and we've watched a number of them and we pulled out cars and it got to me it got me to reflect on how we so often miss out on much of what is truly important that was this is kind of the seed of this series I'll I'll probably be reflecting back on the movie Cars and maybe pulling some quotes out of it, but it's a cartoon, it's a kid's movie, but it's just so much fun for all ages. But it uh, has this character, Lightning McQueen. So that, that, that's kind of this playful playfulness of, of fast and, and speed. It has to do with the, the interstate being built that ends up bypassing the old town. It uh, is inspired by the old Route 66 and I-40 that got bu built many years ago. The little town of Radiator Springs. But, but I want to lean into it not just as nostalgia, but ancient paths of wisdom. We can get to so fast and so modern that we toss aside what our ancestors have taught us. And so the long and winding ancient road less traveled based on Jeremiah 6.16. But then as the events of the last week plus continue to unfold, it, it just didn't feel right for me yet. And this past week I began to look at Jeremiah 6.16 from a slightly different angle. And so this morning, still Jeremiah 6.16, you heard Jer uh, Jeffrey read it for us this morning. But may it speak to us in the midst of these difficult days we find ourselves in. While still laying a foundation for the series, stand at the crossroads and look and ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it and you will find rest for your souls. Stop at the crossroads and look around. Ask for the old godly way and walk in it. Travel its path and you will find rest for your souls. Go stand at the crossroads. Look around. Ask for directions to the old road, the tried and true road, and then take it. Discover the right route for your souls. But you reply, we're not going that way. This morning I'd invite you to think about just the, the three verb, the three action steps in this verse. First, stop. Stop and look. Stand at the crossroads. Stop. This morning, this week, I invite you, and I, I'm, I'm preaching to myself as well. Stop. Stop. Sometimes we, we, just, we just need to stop. There's so many voices, so many things that just are, fill, fill the news feed. We go this this year, this this 2020 year. It just it seems like we, it's almost become laughable. And social media people even make lots of jokes about it. We go, who would have ever thought we would have ended up in this pandemic? And then 
just when we think that is the major news of the day, the major thing that we need to face and deal with, we just continue to to be thrust into things right in our face that are, are, are demanding our response. And, and these things are very important and we do need to respond. But Jeremiah says, stop. Stop what you're doing. Look around. Quit talking. Just stop. And ask. Ask. Ask for the old godly way. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask for the good way. While we stop, these are important times to listen. Listen to what the Lord has to say to us. Listen to what others have to say to us. Once again, I'm preaching to myself. Sometimes we need to stop, and before we're just forming what we have to say, we need to listen to others. We can read. We can read what others have to say. We can listen to the hurting. And we can pray. James 1.5 says, if any of you lacks wisdom, ask God. <laughs> Pray for wisdom. And these can be such overly simplistic words, but I, I really think it's so important for all of us right now. Stand at the crossroads. Stop and look around. But ask, and in asking, listen. And in asking for the old godly way, when we're confronted with behaviors and, and actions that we know we need to repent of and turn from, and we see actions and ways of living that we know we need to walk into, Jeremiah says, take that road. Walk in it. Walk that way. Walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. I, I don't know about you, but that, that phrase just takes on such deep significance right now. Rest for your souls. Yeah, sure, that can, that can be an invitation to where I just wish this would all go away and I could just have some peace. But on a deeper level, this deep rest of God... A deep shalom. A, a peace that's not just a, a lack of noise. A, a peace that is the world working as it, should, as it should work. Wholeness. A world of justice. A world of mercy. Ask for the ancient godly way and then walk in that way and you will find Rest for your souls. But, Jeremiah says, and this is the condemning end of that verse, the prophet is, is, a, is pleading with the people. Walk in this way. And yet over and over and over again, by our actions and our inactions, we say, no, I think I will go this way. got to stop and get back on track and then walk in the way that we know is the right road to take. Ask for the old godly way, the good way, the ancient path. And it got me to thinking that you don't have to dig that deep. We have some simple tried and true directions. The first thing that came to my mind were, was simply the Ten Commandments. And I don't want to be overly simplistic here. As soon as I say the Ten Commandments, some of you are ready to go pour yourself another cup of coffee. 
and I don't want to spend too much time here, but I, the, the Ten Commandments, I'll say it as, as simply symbolic for the entire law, quote-unquote, of the ancient Hebrews. And yes, the, the, that gets legalized, and pretty soon we're into these laws of things that make no sense to us, and why did they have to do that, and why couldn't they do that? But in a, summarily, the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, gives us these, this ancient path. And some of it is so obvious to us and we easily nod, no, have no other gods, and, and honor your parents, and don't steal, and don't murder, and certainly don't commit adultery. But in the midst of some of those things, we, we continually gloss over bearing no false witness. No false witness against your neighbor. Calls us to this ancient, ancient moral high road of, of integrity, loyalty. And the Ten Commandments end with this non coveting. Don't covet, don't, don't envy. Remember, when Jesus is confronted, but okay, teacher, tell us, tell us what the greatest commandment is. He then leans into the ancient law of the Hebrews, and he quotes Deuteronomy, and he quotes Leviticus, and says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And similarly, love your neighbor as yourself. And we will continually find ways to, to legalize and legislate so that we can look at the, uh, the splinter in other people's eyes as they disobey this commandment or that commandment, and we will miss the deep point that Jesus is driving at. All the laws are summarized in love of God and love of the other. That's why in the Sermon on the Mount, he will then go on that litany of, you've heard this law, you've heard it said, you've heard that it's written, but I tell you, it's much deeper than that. We looked at Galatians last week and the walking in the Spirit. And Paul will say, in the midst of his, his argument between for freedom in Christ and, and living this animated life of the Spirit, don't, he says, don't miss, don't miss the point here. God can't be mocked. This freedom that I'm advocating doesn't give you license to just do whatever you want. God can't be mocked. You reap what you sow. And so in hearkening back to the law of the Ten Commandments, it's not, it's not to get back to some source of legalism. It's to see the heartbeat of why, what God was calling his people to on Mount Sinai. To be a certain kind of people. It's why Jesus came. Jesus did not come to say, I found another way. That old way of laws is bad. Here's a new way. I'm just going to forgive you for doing all that stuff. No, the depth of compassion and mercy and grace and love of God does forgive us of all transgression. But the compelling invitation of Jesus was to remember the covenant, to remember this relationship of loving God and loving neighbor and being these kinds of people and to show us the way. Ask for the old godly way, the good way, the ancient path. It's always been there. Which is why I thought I would just go back to this simple verse that is so familiar to us. But again, when, in stopping, stopping and asking and listening, let's not just, just quote it. We, we didn't sing it this morning. But Micah 6, 8, another prophet inviting people to, to get back on the road, says, God's shown you what is good. God has shown you the good way. What does God require of us? But to act justly, to love mercy and walk humbly with our God to act justly, to do 
justice, to do what is right, to do what is fair. We must be both voices and active participants in justice. And to love mercy, to be compassionate, to be kind. and walk humbly with your God. I looked at different translations here and I noticed a footnote in one translation and a footnote to walk humbly said circumspectly, which caused me to look that word up and just see what some of the definitions for circumspectly was and it said watchful, prudent, and well considered. So again, before we just glibly say, walk humbly with your God, walk, walk circumspectly, which, which means slow down, watch where you're going, watch your step, be watchful, be prudent, and may your steps, may our steps be well considered. He's shown us the good way, the ancient path of righteousness. And, and what does it look like? It looks like justice and mercy and humility. I've wrestled all week long on, on, on what should be said about the events of the last few weeks. And it, it seems like everyone and their brothers are, are, are posting statements. And, and I think these statements are important. And, and yet I don't want to just jump on the bandwagon and, and parrot some other, someone, someone else's statement. And, and so, so I've been a little bit of a loss. But I, but I am sharing in email and other things some of the other words. Our, our board of bishops put out a good word this week. Our superintendent uh, just a couple of days ago, put out a statement on behalf of the conference. But you know, just a few weeks ago, uh, I received in the mail my 2019 Book of Discipline of the Free Methodist Church. <laughs> this is some really, really compelling reading. Um, but no, this is, this is important. This is polity. This is, this is what our, how our church is organized. This is what our church believes. This is the, uh, this is the official, this is the constitution of the Free Methodist Church. And in paragraph 320, no, 3,221B, I just thought in closing this morning I would read to you. This is not in response to what's going on in the last days. This is, this is from the 2019 General Conference that convened a year ago. But it's also been, I mean, these obviously are words, many of these words have been around for a long time. And they get tweaked every four years. They get looked at and resolutions are made and edits are made. But anyway, this is the 2019 Book of Discipline of the Free Methodist Church, paragraph 3221B with regard to racism. It's a little long, but I invite you to, to listen as I try to read it slowly and circumspectly. Racism represents a particularly, particularly egregious affront to the dignity and worth of persons, and its presence is manifest in the life, history, and institutions of all nations. Slavery and genocide are grievous stains, warning collective lament, repentance, and repair. Racial oppression in all its forms continues to exact harm throughout the world, distorting the dignity of persons and God's love for the great multitude of all nations. The Free Methodist Church itself, born out of a desire to stand against the evil of slavery, and we continue to recognize the sin of racism, of racism and oppose it in all its forms. We do so with the following convictions. One, we commit to lament and repent for the ways that we have been complicit in 
or failed to recognize acts of racial oppression. Two, we commit to an attitude of ceaseless humility and self-examination, recognizing the ease with which our own limitations can make us blind to the experiences and interests of others. We shall seek to identify, confess, and redeem thoughts, attitudes, or behaviors that manifest discrimination against a person on the basis of race, ethnicity, or any other distinction between social groups that we create or enforce. Three, because systemic racism, the way in which human institutions or structures can both actively and passively preserve patterns of discrimination and exclusion, because systemic racism is less perceptible, but no less harmful than overt individual racist acts, we commit not just to avoid or sanction individual prejudicial, prejudicial attitudes and actions, but seek to redeem processes, systems, and institutions that continue to perpetuate injustice on the base of race or ethnicity. And for, therefore, in our own churches and denomination, we commit ourselves to model the racial redemption and reconciliation we hope to see in the world, proclaiming the transformative victory of Jesus Christ into places of great brokenness, looking forward to the day when all people gather before the throne of God. I don't have all the answers. I don't know what all the action steps needs to be. But let us commit anew to walking the good way, the path of justice and mercy and humility. Stop the crossroads and look around. Ask for the old godly way and walk in it. Travel its path and we will find rest for our souls. Friends, in conclusion, know that God has been through difficult times before. God has been through difficult times before. These days will pass. But will we, will we be the kind of people that God is in the business of transforming? A friend of mine posted this little poem just last night and thought I'd close with it. What if 2020 isn't canceled? <laughs> what if 2020 is the year we've been waiting for? A year so uncomfortable, so painful, so scary, so raw, that it finally forces us to grow. A year that screams so loud, finally awakening us from our ignorant slumber. A year we finally accept the need for change, declare change, work for change, become the change. A year we finally band together instead of pushing each other further apart. What if 2020 isn't canceled, but rather is the most important year of them all? Walk humbly, seek justice, and work toward it. Love mercy, be merciful, be kind. In a word, love, love with the love of Jesus. Amen.